part of this subject. And that's all I can do today, introduce you. You want me to teach the subject? You have to read my books. If you read Jerusalem in the Quran, which I wrote uh, 10 years ago, and this cover design was done right here in Malaysia, this book will introduce you to the subject of Akhiru Zaman. And we also have the book in Bahasa, but we only have about 20 copies today. The companions of the Prophet ﷺ were sitting talking amongst themselves. When he came and he asked, what are you talking about? And they said, we are talking about Alamatu Sa'a, the signs of the last day. And then he said, and this hadith is in Sahih Bukhari, it is in Sahih Muslim. He said, the last day would not come until, and he mentioned, ten signs. Ten signs. The ten were not given in the order in which they will occur. We do not know that order. So we are giving you the ten in a random way. Number one, Dajjal. Number two, Ya'juj and Ma'juj, or Gog and Magog. And this is the last book that I've written, an Islamic view of Gog and Magog in the modern world. Number three, the return of the son of Mary, Nabi Isa Islam. Number four, Bukhar, smoke. It is my opinion, and you must never accept my opinion, never until you are convinced that it is correct. It is my opinion that this Dukhan is probably about 20 or 25 years away from now. Hmm? When the clash of Gog and Magog will take place, it will be nuclear war with thousands of nuclear weapons being used. On the one side you have Russia and her allies and on the other side you have America and her allies the Gog and Magog clash will take place with all these thousands of nuclear weapons being used and it is, you know, a nuclear bomb produces a mushroom cloud so can you imagine what's going to happen when thousands of nuclear weapons are used? Hmm? there is a verse in the Quran which relates to this in Surah Al-Isra which is also known as Surah Bani Israel I think that my lecture is a little bit boring because some people are falling asleep <laughs> huh? if you see anybody sleeping wake them up Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Listen to the verse. بَعْدَ أُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَإِن مِّن قَرِيَةٍ إِلَّا نَحْنُ مُحْلِكُوهَا قَبْلَ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ أَوْ مُعَذِّبُوهَا عَذَابًا شَدِيدًا كَانَ ذَلِكَ فِي الْكِتَابِ مَسْتُورًا And not a single town or city will escape. Allah is going to destroy every town and every city. And those which escape destruction will be punished with terrible punishment. And my opinion is that you've got about 20-25 years left. Of course, I can be wrong. When that clash takes place of Gog and Magog, that's it. The only ones which will, who will survive would be those who are in the remote countryside. And you know that you are in the remote countryside when you cannot use a cell phone. 
So that is number four, Dukhad. Smoke. Number five, Dabbatul Ab. A beast or a creature of the Ard. Ard can mean earth. Ard can mean the material universe. Ard can mean land. Ard can mean territory. Hmm? In the context in which this appears, my opinion is that it refers to Al Ardul Muqaddasa, the Holy Land. That a beast will appear in the Holy Land. The Quran tells us about that beast. And you know the punctuation in the Quran did not come from Allah. No. They would, the Prophet والسلام, would, would recite the ayah and the scribes would write it down. But when they wrote it down, they didn't put in punctuation. So this is one word which can have two possible meanings. That the beast would to kalimuhum, speak to them, or taklimuhum, wound them. My understanding is the second meaning is more appropriate. And so I have come to, con to the conclusion that this state of Israel today is the beast of the up. Well, Allah knows best. Number six, that the sun would rise from the west. My methodology of study is that the Quran is the only supreme authentic authority in Islam. And, and no hadith has absolute authenticity. And therefore the Quran sits in judgment over the hadith. Hadith cannot change the Quran. No. The Quran tells us that the sun rises from the east. I believe it does in KL, does it? From the east? Right. Good. And the sun sets in the west. The Quran tells us that. And the Quran also tells us La Tabdila li khalkilla that Allah's creation does not change. Therefore, I have come to the conclusion that the sun cannot physically rise from the west. No, because that would be in conflict with the Quran. But you would be surprised at the number of emails I'm getting from all over the world. Sheikh, there's something called reverse magnetic theory or something like that or the other. And, and the sun is actually going to rise from the west. Or oh, they're not giving me any peace at all. Therefore I have to understand the sun rising from the west to be something which is symbolic. There is going to be a false sunrise. That false sunrise will come from the west. It is not the true sunrise. This false sunrise wants to replace the true sunrise. And so I have perceived that false sunrise to be modern Western secular civilization. But this is my opinion. Do not accept my opinion unless you are convinced that it is correct. Number seven, eight, and nine. That there will be three khusuf, plural of khas. A khas is a movement of the earth, which is normally called an earthquake. 
but this movement of the earth would result in a sinking down of the earth one would be in the east the second would be in the west and the third you know I was here a few years ago and in Tamansuri UK it, it was Ramadan the people you didn't hear about it? they, they had woken up in the morning for the Sahri and the whole house the whole house went down you didn't hear about it? Tamansuri UK <laughs> so one in the east one in the west and the third one in Arabia and that third one in Arabia that is the one who will, which will confirm that this is Imam al-Mahdi not the eclipse of the sun and the moon no no this is the one the sinking down of the earth in Arabia and number 10 that a fire will come out of Yemen I don't understand this to be a literal fire I understand this to be a revolutionary fire hmm? you remember 1990 some of you may have been born already 1990 huh? <laughs> when uh, Saddam Hussein sent his troops into Kuwait huh? and took over Kuwait remember oh my you should have seen the Malay people they were all celebrating yes the Malay were very happy and all the Malay were supporting Saddam in Singapore as well giving a headache to the Singapore government because they detested Kuwait they detested Kuwait and the Yemeni people there were about 8 million of them working in Saudi Arabia and the Yemeni people all applauded and they supported <laughs> Saddam Hussein so when Bush senior sent what he called a desert storm and pushed this Iraqi army out of Kuwait Saudi Arabia then retaliated against those 8 million Yemenis and threw them out of the country <laughs> so the heart of Yemen is anti-systemic hmm? the heart of Yemen despises the oppressor and this is why the Prophet said Allahumma barik lana fi shamina wa yamanina O oh Allah grant blessings for us in our Sham Syria and our Yemen I wish he had included Indonesia as well and so a fire will come out of Yemen and drive mankind to the place of assembly which is Arafat and so that spells goodbye to Saudi Arabia hmm? these are the ten major signs of the last day and I want I don't have the time now each one of these will take some time to explain each one of these I'm writing a book on the Dajjal now and I hope I can complete that book while I'm here in Malaysia I've already written this book on Gog and Magog it's the only book in the market in the modern age the only one uh, but you should now because of today's lecture and because you have been to KLCC don't tell me you've not been to KLCC and you've seen the tall buildings today's lecture is a wake-up call that you must study the subject